from Every Time I Die. Keith, thanks for doing Hi, this interview. Absolutely. You're welcome. So you guys, yeah, I'll do. It. <laughs> so you guys just got off a of warp tour then? Yes. Um, I don't even remember what day. What day is it now? Wednesday. Yeah. I feel like Friday or Saturday is the last day where tour members started coming. I'm playing shows long going home. It's so. a terrible idea. It sounds good at the time when you're booking the shows. You're like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to just drive straight across the country and go home. I might as well stop every once in a while and play a show. And then work tour ends and you're just like, you know. But yeah. For now, it's fine. The well, shows are great. At least you're going from being hot outside to being hot inside. Yeah, That's yeah. Really change. Yeah, but the, the pump shows are, are more of our natural environment. So I feel really comfortable being back here. Yeah. yeah. It's every time I've ever seen you guys. It's yeah. Like on the warp tour. It's yeah, like it's typically the warp tour. Back. Yeah, festivals and things like that we'll do outside, but it's not preferred. So you got your new album coming out September 26th? 3rd. Oh, September 3rd. 3rd. Yeah, 3rd. My bad. Yeah. Uh, called Low Teens. So yeah. how do you feel like that's going to hit, you think, pretty good? Um. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's a different band now, so I feel in a way like it's our first record, so I'm very, very excited about it. I don't at all feel like it's a band that's putting out an eighth record on like a, a schedule, mm -hmm. you know, according to some clock that's been established in all the prior years. I definitely feel like with Daniel and it, and just uh, my approach to writing it, it's just a different band now, so yeah, I'm very excited. I mean... I don't think we're gonna like get a gold record or anything, but mm -hmm. I think that if there was one that ever had potential to really have some some sort of energy behind it that could push it throughout to a lot of people, it would be this one. Yeah. I know, and like some of the things I watched to get prepared for this, uh, that you mentioned in some other interviews, that a lot of this record is influenced about like the kind of stuff you went through yeah. when you guys when you left early out of Ontario, yeah. I think it was, to yeah. go back to Buffalo. Yeah. Life, yeah, yeah, it was, it was weird just writing a writing a record that's personal and like honest and true is something I hadn't really done much of before, um, and it felt really good. Uh, it wasn't easy, but it was definitely more rewarding. And I kind of wonder what what my life would be like if I had done it sooner. You know? Yeah, but it's hey, it happened for a reason. So well, those emotional records are always the best records I find. So. Yeah, this one's got this one's got plenty of emotion to it. So, besides your two singles you have out right now, besides Splitches and Point Has to yeah. Stay, what other songs on there are you really excited for everyone else to get to hear? Uh, what day is it today? The 23rd? Uh, 17th. Oh, Jesus. 17th. Yeah, 17th. Okay, on the 25th, um, we're releasing another single called C++. Um, so we're just kind of going through the final stage of that. That's more of like an alternative rock song, which is really, really cool. It reminds me of like a Bleach era in Nirvana song. Um, so I'm very excited for that one. Um, uh, you know, we just have so much time before the actual release of this record that we're able to do things like put out a song every once in a while to kind of whet people's appetites. And, yeah, we're working on a video, not for that song, for yet another song, so it's good. I don't think From Parts Unknown got so many singles. I think we just did The Thirst and The King. Yeah. Right? That's it, yeah. This one will have four by the time the record comes out. Yeah. So, I personally noticed, since I kind of know you guys really mm. well, um, that with your song, The Coin Has a Say, you mentioned the lyric, it's our first night in town. Yeah. And your guys' first actual full-length album is The Last yeah. Night in Town. Is yeah. that kind of like a callback to that, or is it just... Um, yeah, uh, in, a, in a way, the, the whole song is about kind of starting over. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely a callback um, to, to a whole different side of Every Time I Die and like a new approach to, to writing and to and it's uh, just a different approach to living, basically, for me. Um, but yeah, it feels like things are kind of starting over. Like I have a new, you know, new slate to work with. Yeah. Um, so now that you guys have had such a extensive like amount of albums out there, yeah. But aside from this new Low Teams album, which you seem like you're really excited about, what do you feel was your best album before that? Um. Can't wait to go there. No, it's kind of hard though. To it say. is kind of hard, but I, I I think for parts unknown. Only because that was where I really started to kind of veer mm -hmm. in a different direction as far as like lyric writing and things like that. Um, but that for me was just more personally rewarding. I, I don't know if I'm able to listen to it as a whole record and, and appreciate it as much as I do. Um, man, like, I guess Gutter Phenomenon for me as a whole record sounds cool because it was our first like real record with a real producer. Mm -hmm. Each of them are our kids and I have 
I love yeah. them for a different reason, you know. But I don't know. I, yeah, I think that from parts unknown, it was my favorite one before this one. Yeah, personally, every album I've ever listened to from you guys, I, you guys haven't disappointed yet. It Thanks. Kind of seems like with each album. Um, I mean, a, a lot of musicians have it where they they progress yeah. correctly and yeah. constantly get better and better with every album. But it seems like you like. No offense, but the last album, the complete shame. And oh, album, thanks. Yeah, that's yeah. what we're trying to do. Yeah, I, I really want to, to, to burn every bridge mm -hmm. before making a new one. I don't want to just keep linking these records to each other. I want to completely annihilate everything we did before with each one. And I think definitely this one does it, for sure. Which I thought would be hard. I remember walking out from Parts Unknown session and being like, I don't know if we're ever going to top this. And then we started writing more teams. I was like, holy shit, we're going to top it. It was a really good feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a really good feeling to have after the first week of writing. Yeah. Um, so, you guys play almost, I feel like, the majority of your catalog live for the most part. Yeah, we really touch on everything. Yeah, but what's, what would you say, like, your, your three favorite songs you like to play for everyone? Um, I really like playing New Black still. Um, More has taken on a life of its own, which is crazy. I didn't expect that to be such, like, a sing-along song, but I guess I mean, it is, I mean, I, I don't know why I didn't think it would be, um, but yeah, it's, it's, that's really fun to play, um, glitches is also pretty fun, just because it's, yeah, like, glitches, I, I think it really hits harder to live, yeah, in the studio you can really capture, yeah, and I know, in, like, some past dance, <coughs> people I've talked to before, like, I don't know if you've ever heard of Cancer Bad, oh, yeah, 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 like, when I was talking with Liam, when I saw him a little while back in my hometown, he was saying, like, yeah, um, we hit so much harder live than yeah, we yeah. even do on our record. Because I went in there, I mean, I was expecting, you know, something kind of heavy. Yeah. But then for them to... Yeah, it's good to be a band that can do that live because that means you'll have longevity. I mean, if you can't deliver uh, the, the record live, people are just going to stay home and listen to the CD. You know what I mean? And, and touring is the only way that a band like us is able to stay above water, um, you know, financially. So... The fact that we still get people out, you know, at the last shows that we did, it's everything. It's the only way you're going to get people back. I mean, yeah, having a new record will be great, but people will come to see the new songs live. It's not, I mean, it's, it's pretty much a no-brainer as far as what you have to do to follow up a record. You can't just rely that your records are going to sell. Mm -hmm. you're be okay, but it's not like, was the song more the last album? Um, this is a do you do anything kind of similar to that in your new album? Yeah. This is more uh, that was a very sad song. Mm -hmm. um, I think the lyrics are, are, are you know, they're, they're not necessarily upbeat lyrics, but mm -hmm. I don't think there's any of that, like, intentional brooding, yeah. uh, which was more. And I'll only admit that that's a, that was what I wanted to do. It was a very open, poor, poor me, poor everyone I know sort of song. Yeah, um, yeah it was very, very sad. But no, this, this record is Unless, you, unless something with the lyrics hits me. Yeah. You know, then I didn't intend, I'm not intentionally going out to make anybody really sad. Yeah. More with new things outside yeah. every time I die. Yeah. You write some articles, like respond to some people's yeah. questions and stuff. I saw your recent article with uh, Hillary and Trump. Yeah. That's evil thing. Yeah, that's a, rough, that's a rough one to write. That was a tough pill to swallow, but, you know, I don't really want to get into it. Yeah. I, yeah, I hate it. I, I mean, I, I, I hate the fact that this is what a lot of life is. Americans has come down to. It's really disgusting. It's shameful. Um, and I'm hoping this is a tipping point. Things will only get better from here because I really can't see how we can get much worse. Yeah. That's my hope. It probably can't get worse though. I just haven't been alive long enough to see how it's possible. It's just so big. Yeah, we're hoping. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what would you say like the most interesting question? Thing that people, someone needs advice on that you've gotten on that so far. Yeah. Um, as far, oh man, people that want like relationship advice is really fun to me because I just have such a different understanding of human nature, being on tour all the time. So the way that I interact with people doesn't really apply across the board like it should. So when I try to give personal advice, as far as like to lovers and friends, yeah, it's funny to see how. Um, on a depth I am at doing that because I really don't know what to say to people and I realize all these shortcomings I have so it's a learning process for me too. So yeah, dealing with like how you should treat your friends. My answer is always just forget them. <laughs> yeah. If someone's toxic, you let them go. You know, and that's easy for me to say because I'm constantly traveling. Mm -hmm. But it's way difficult for someone who is stuck in a toxic situation. So, yeah. 
So I see that you're friends with JC. Yes, I am. Yeah, yeah. Um, JC Catlin. So obviously, you have to unless you mean the Lord you. Jesus Christ. No, okay. not the Lord Jesus. Okay. Christ. Yeah, JC Catlin, the next best thing. Yes, basically. Yeah. Like, just show it to me. He's amazing. Yeah. Um, so obviously, you have to have a good sense of humor. What's, what's the best joke you think you've ever heard? I mean, obviously. I, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. I mean, with, with, the, with the, the delivery of a joke, I mean, that, that's pretty much everything. I, I like really stupid jokes, really, really dumb ones. So, I guess if I had to pick a joke that like, blew my mind when I heard it when I was little, it was, why did the koala bear fall out of the tree? Because he was dead. That joke, when I was little, just blew my mind. And I, it was funny to me until recently. It's still pretty funny to me, but I remember hearing it when I was little and just being like, that's the funniest thing. I can imagine. Yeah. 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 I don't yeah. remember. I don't even remember who told it to me. I probably shouldn't be hanging out with kids. Yeah, this doesn't sound like it. <coughs> Not at all. <coughs> anyone you want to say to anyone out there that you know who Every Time I Die is yet? No, if you don't know who Every Time I Die is by now, it's too late for you. There's no hope. I, in my opinion, like I say, everyone, fuck you if you don't know who they are. All right. Well, well you're well. always welcome if you want to check it out for yeah. the first time. All right. Well, thanks, Keith, for thanks, talking man. to me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, all right. It's been Keith from Every Time I Die, and we'll see you next time. See ya. Yeah.